Hey everybody, film critic Tom Santilli with Movie Show Plus. I have exciting news. I'm gonna be hosting a new film series coming to the Maple Theater. It's called The Movies That Made Me. The concept is simple. Every time I pick a spotlight guest and that guest will pick a film that they love. A film that was influential to them, whether in childhood, their professional career, or their adult life. We won't know what the movie is. It'll be a surprise. And once we view it, we will have that guest in theater for a live Q&A. On Wednesday, May 10th, my spotlight guest will be Star Wars artist and filmmaker Matt Bush. He will have exclusive hand-drawn art for everyone in attendance. This one is going to be tons of fun. I don't want you to miss the movies that made me. What's up, everybody? Chris Pratt here. They've given me a camera and a list of rules, all of which I'm going to ignore. To be reunited with this Guardians family for Volume 3, it's really fantastic. We're genuine fans, so there's something really sweet about geeking out on set. <laughs> you had me at... Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Guardians is about humor, it's about action, it's about cosmic adventures. Drax, sit up! That's what it's here for. Drax, it's called a sofa. It's not a bed. Well, I find it hard to believe it doesn't have multiple purposes. But it's really about this found family. Don't forget, where are we came from? This is a Rocket origin story. We are learning more and more about what Rocket has been through. We were always searching for a family until we found each other. <laughs> Let's give the galaxy something to remember us by. It's so beautiful. Everything is in the detail. It's imagination, music, beautiful imagery. It's really a fantastic story from the brain of a mad genius, James Gunn. Everything that drives it is that emotional center of all of these characters who are all outsiders. We have been running our whole lives. Pete, I'm done running. I love everybody, and I'm so proud of what we've accomplished. I want you all to know that I am grateful to fight beside my friends. It's another rock opera. It's really fantastic, and it wraps it up in a way that really only James could. Are you ready for one last ride? We'll all fly away together into the forever and beautiful sky. Thank God I don't operate the camera for this movie. Because if I did, it would look terrible. Listen to me, George. You got a punch like I've never seen. But in every battle, the greatest foe that we will combat isn't here. Live one way your whole life. Heavenly Father, thank you for this food. George should change his name from poor man to poor man. <laughs> to hurt. There go, Springer! What's my name now, fool? Foreman is the new heavyweight champion of the world. Where's all that rage coming from? I don't from? have any rage. And it becomes all you know. Let's thank God for the food, y'all. I bought the food, mama. George Foreman, what a pleasure it is to see you, sir. Russell is glad. I'm happy to see you, too, and I don't have to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just be running around the ring going, ring the bell! Ring the bell! Ring the bell! Come on! <laughs> oh, man. Well, George, I, I enjoyed the movie. I mean, you know, obviously had heard about all the stories, you know, even starting way back when you first got into the boxing and all that. What's it like for you to have sat in the audience and watch this, saying, this is my story? Boy, Chris Davis, the guy who did the scenes of George Foreman, played George Foreman, yeah. what a job. He had me on the edge of my seats. Uh, my seat even made me cry a few times with the punching power he had. And then Doc Brodus with Forrest Whitaker, the trainer who never gave up on me. Boy, it was a, really a journey back through life. I shed a few tears watching that movie. I mean, it's exciting. It was exciting to tell this story because, as a, you know, I've, I've watched, you know, the, the boxing championships a lot throughout time, but this period that this movie takes place in was the one I remember the most. Uh, I remember uh, George Foreman Frazier, 
you know, Ali, it was a whole different kind of thing. And even Kenny Norton coming in. And um, so it was exciting to get a chance to be a part of that and to contribute in some way. And you just made me think, uh, you know, even though it was 50 years ago when he fought Frazier, everybody to this day still uses that famous line when they see somebody go down. Down goes Frazier. Down <laughs> goes Frazier. And it's like, yeah. whoa. Howard, that was another thing that was exciting about it because the, the banter between Muhammad Ali and Howard Cosell was like something that I would watch. I remember as a kid, it's kind of inspiring because I'd never seen a, I see I'd never seen a black guy like talking like that on screen on television, you know, and, and it turning into like a, his, his platform, you know, it was pretty amazing. Mr. Foreman, that funny little grill deal you signed is starting to generate some substantial checks. Really? Now I'm just surprised it shows a big old fat guy like me to sell a beer to help people get lean. <laughs> I've been looking forward to tonight for so long. The, the world premiere, for, for us, this is the first time I'll have seen the movie in its entirety. I've been intentionally waiting for tonight to be surrounded by my friends, my families here at the Dolby Theater in Los Angeles. This is what it all comes down to. It's our night to celebrate, uh, that you can feel the excitement uh, amongst uh, me and all our friends and the cosplayers here, but also having traveled around the world, uh, from, from around the world, people are really excited for this movie. To be able to come here and celebrate our time together, not only having made this movie, but all of us together for over 10 years, having made the entire you know, trilogy of films is an amazing experience. And I just cannot wait to get in there and watch the movie with everybody. <sighs> it's, it was incredible. You know, we circumnavigated the entire globe. I don't know if I've ever done that before, but it was wild and amazing and so cool to just like get to meet all of these fans from all different parts of the planet. And, and, and everyone is brought together by, you know, this Marvel movie. And there's something so special about that. Uh, it was a joyous experience. I, I don't think I've ever been to a premiere that looks like this. The fans are incredible. It's so beautiful to me. It's, it's totally unique to my experience with Marvel. I've never... I remember the first time I went to Comic-Con, I'd never felt that kind of joy before. And I, I just think it's so powerful and special. And I, yeah, I don't take it for granted. Oh my gosh, it's just so surreal to be on this purple carpet right now. And oh, it's just so thrilling and I'm just so excited to see the movie. And I'm beyond grateful to be here. It's, it's kind of feels, I can't believe it's been so many years. They were just talking about how many years have gone by. It feels like I just spoke with James Gunn about playing this character and now we're at the final end of it. It's weird how time works. Yeah, it's been incredible. It's really been, I love Rocket a lot. And uh, it was a real privilege to play him, to be a part of the team that is Rocket, and then to, to, to do the, in this last incarnation of Guardians, that they really were able to focus on his story it meant a lot to me, to be able to help, help tell that. I am very excited to be sharing this movie with an audience. And I think that the thing that really defines the people that I've worked with in this film and the entire journey is that we really care, we really want uh, to tell a great story and we're all on the same page and we work together to do that and so I just, I hope people like it. We've done, we've done our best and here it is. I just want to say to all of you here, this has been the most marvelous journey. Enjoy the movie. All right, everyone, the time has finally come. 
Put those cell phones away. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the world premiere of Marvel Studios Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. We were always searching for a family until we found each other. Are you ready for one last ride? fly away together into the forever and beautiful sky. Whoever it was that you were in love with, it sounds more like her. Her? That's Do ridiculous. not bring me into this. Oh, really? <laughs> Knock it off! What? I just never noticed how black your eyes were. They were replaced by my father as a method of torture. He, he picked a pretty set. Hey everybody, film critic Tom Santilli with Movie Show Plus. I have exciting news. I'm going to be hosting a new film series coming to the Maple Theater. It's called The Movies That Made Me. The concept is simple. Every time I pick a spotlight guest, and that guest will pick a film that they love. A film that was influential to them, whether in childhood, their professional career, or their adult life. We won't know what the movie is. It'll be a surprise. And once we view it, we will have that guest in theater for a live Q&A on Wednesday, May 10th. My spotlight guest will be Star Wars artist and filmmaker Matt Bush. He will have exclusive hand-drawn art for everyone in attendance. This one is going to be tons of fun. I don't want you to miss the movies that made me. Hey, Greg Russell here from Movie Show Plus, enjoying being here at the Foundation Hotel this week. We've been taking the show on the road quite a bit. Now, if you've got a business that you would like us to showcase, just let us know. Get in touch with us via our website right here, MovieShowPlus.com, and we'll get back with you. And hey, who knows? You might be the next movie star right here on Movie Show Plus. reached the home of the retired and gifted. Where are you? I'm in a church. What? Are you serious? We're looking for a venue for the wedding. You are going to get married in a church? I'm shocked you didn't burst into flames as you crossed the threshold. <laughs> to Viv and Arthur. Oh, 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 thank you. I think we should all go to Italy. Italy? Whoa. We'll make it Viv's bachelorette. A bachelorette trip? What are we doing? I think it's very romantic. But it's also nuts. Rome is a great walking city. Belle donne! Le viti più vecchie danno l'uva più dolce. What did he say? The older the vines, the 
Sweeter the fruit. Oh, yeah. Whatever it is, Detroit. It's yes. That was what matters to me. Great. <laughs> Detroit loves all of you, as do I, and love this movie. In fact, I love the first one so much, I've got the poster hanging next to our video screen in our family room. Oh, wow. <laughs> so the poster for this one, right on the other <laughs> side. Oh, thank you. Right on the other thank side. Thank you. Because as a fam fellow baby boomer, I mean, it's just great. You know, just seeing people who are out enjoying themselves. Yeah. Because yeah. like with your character, Jane, she's finally getting married after all this time. <laughs> after all this time. <laughs> <laughs> and her friends saw a surprise wedding. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you liked it. Yeah. And like I said, you guys definitely come across, you know, all as friends. But like we said, you're here. You're in a different country. You're thinking, okay, everything's going to run smooth. But it doesn't, does it? Of course not. <laughs> but we have a hell of a good time. And... Having it not go the way we expected, mm -hmm. yes. And we yeah. did have a hell of a good time shooting it. Oh, yes, we did. Oh, I I can only imagine. Uh, was, if you can, talk a little bit about that then, Candace, the good times that you guys had with the shooting. Well, we were just loose in mm -hmm. Rome. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and we just went to fabulous restaurants, and we mm -hmm. walked, and we just explored the city. It was just such a treat. I mean, we were there for two and a half months. Wow. Well, Venice on the end for yeah. 10 days, God. which wasn't hell. No, <laughs> no, I mean, there can be worse places, right, Mary? I mean, <laughs> to, to go and shoot a movie. No, it was a dream. It was like after all these years of surviving this business, I was given mm -hmm. a reward, and it was to go with these ladies mm -hmm. and our, our lovely Diane, who's not here yeah. today, but uh, here in spirit, and we all uh, had a ball. And like you said, it does. It looks like absolutely four friends in real life, you know, all getting together. And then also learning how to enjoy life. Because there's one thing your character said near the end about, you know what, stop worrying about what may be, what might not be. Just let it be and be yourself. Yeah. Because that's what we got to do in life. we got to continue to enjoy. Can't control everything, so just go with it. Make the best of it. And we had a, a great time. We loved Venice. We had such a good time driving up and down the canal in a, in a boat, ooing and eyeing, and having all the buildings explained to us. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that does look great. It looks like a fun time, like you said, where you've got your drinks and enjoying and all like that. The yeah. drinks were key. Yes. <laughs> I said, so they, they weren't make-believe. They were real, which Sometimes, is great. Sometimes. Not always. Sometimes? Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> like, you know the scene where, where we're trying on wedding dresses? Yes. That was real Prosecco. Those were real okay. drinks. Yep. That was a scene where you could have fun, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like you said, you had so much just fun going through everything. I mean, like Candace, all of a sudden, you meet this one guy, you know, one yeah. night. And, and uh, why not? And, and I'm a slut. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you say, no, you're just having a, having a good time. Yes, in a gondola. <laughs> Who could beat that? Yeah, exactly. He was very charming. Mm -hmm. He was pretty irresistible. But you got to seize your own destiny and not say no to life. And um, it's a great lesson to remember always. I mean, even if you can't go to Italy, mm -hmm. do something fun with your girlfriends especially. Oh, yeah. But, ladies, thank you so very, very much for your time. Thank you again for so this movie. So glad you liked it. Oh, I've already told my wife. I'm taking you to see that she's going, you never take me to movies. It's like, well, I'm taking you to this one. <laughs> oh, great. And also, she, you'll have a great time, the two of you. Absolutely. Yeah. And pretty happy birthday to you next week. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Hers is May the 9th. Mine's May the 8th. That's why I know. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. <Yes. laughs> she takes control of her own destiny. This is a bachelorette party. You know what that means? We go see naked men. What's the protocol here? Where do I stuff the dollar bills? It's breathtaking. When you see sand here, imagine water. If you dive in, you can't reach the bottom. You dive in? Yes, it's called swimming. I don't, I don't believe you. In the shadows of Arrakis lie many secrets. But the darkest of them all may remain. The end of House Atreides. Your father didn't believe in revenge. 
What if Paul Atreides were still alive? Have you ever had a dream about your first ride? Don't try to impress anyone. You're brave, we all know that. Be simple. Be direct. Nothing fancy. I understand. Nothing fancy. You will never lose me, Paul Atreides. We gave them something to hope for. That's not hope! May thy knife chip and shatter. During this episode, you may have seen some promos for my new film series, Movies That Made Me, at the Maple Theater. The premise of this, again, is every time I do it, I have a spotlight guest who comes in and picks a movie that was influential to them, whether in their childhood or their adult life or their career. We don't know what the movie is. It's a surprise. We recently had our inaugural Movies That Made Me event with none other than Detroit Red Wings legend Darren McCarty. It was amazing. The, it went better than I even thought it would. Uh, people had a great time. Darren was fabulous. The movie that he selected, big surprise, was the movie Gladiator. Uh, Ridley Scott's Gladiator. We watched Gladiator. We followed it up with an interview uh, with Darren and myself. We opened it up for some questions. And then at the end, we did what we're calling the Santilli Stinger, which is kind of my version of of James Lipton's Inside the Actor's Studio, like that final questionnaire that he goes through at the end of every episode. So, here's an excerpt from the Movies That Made Me event with Darren McCarty, so you can get a taste as to what it was like. How y'all feeling out there? All right. I'm going to say it more than once, but I, I just want to thank Darren for being here again tonight, sharing his time with us and uh, sharing that movie with us, dude. That What a great, great pick. <laughs> well, it, it, and it's amazing. And I know uh, my friend Amber over there, this first time that she said, was this the first time anybody else has seen this movie? Like, a really? couple people, oh, yeah. Okay, so this is, a, again, a mixture of all of these things. It's, uh, it's only 55 questions. I'm just kidding. It's 13 questions. Uh, question number one to Darren McCarty. What's your favorite word? <laughs> Usually Lipton would ask a separate question for the, the cur favorite curse word, but we, we got it all in one right there. Right there. My, fa my, my favorite word is and my second favorite word is bro. Bro. <laughs> What's your least favorite word? Negative. Mm. Who plays you in the movie Matthew of your life? Matthew McConaughey. Man. All right, all right, all right. You already know. He already thought you about already that. Know. He's been thinking it, that. Yeah, I had, he has to have a <laughs> lifetime role where he can play bongos naked in the yard and actually make it like in the documentary. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe I've done that before. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. All right, number four. Yeah, I've been uh, thinking about that one for a while. Right? <laughs> yeah, that was too quick. I almost didn't get the question out. You had it. Uh, best movie theater candy. Ooh, okay. Pre-dentures, milk duds. Okay, okay. <laughs> but you know what? I'm a, um, and I didn't do it tonight because I was behaving myself, but I'm a put a, put a uh, thing of regular M&Ms in your popcorn. Ooh, okay, okay. 
Popcorns and gummies. Pop, gummy, yeah. Milk duds were the best until I popped two caps on them, and then I, you know. Couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, I couldn't do it anymore. But I'm, I like gummies, gummies and uh, just regular uh, plain M&Ms in your popcorn. Okay, okay. Star, Star Wars or Star Trek? <laughs> I'm a Mandalorian. I don't know if you know that. A Mandalorian. <laughs> I'm a Mandalorian. I, I absolutely believe that. That, and I collect other Mandalorian, and we fly different places and <laughs> and stuff like That's that. Great. I've all, all, always been. Yeah. How do you define success? Yeah, success. Yeah, success is have control in your own power. Control where you spend your time. Yeah. What time? What? How you? How you spend your time? People you spend your time with. What you spend yeah. your time doing? Because time is the, the most precious thing. I mean, how many people in, like, I mean, I've lost five friends in the, in the beginning of the year, that, and nobody's been above 50. Yeah. You just never know. My final question, this comes from uh, Colbert. Describe the rest of your life in five words. <laughs> um, the biggest trick is to make sure it's five words so most people will come out with four or six it's tough unpredictably entertaining compassionately philo philanthropically remembered there you go everybody Darren McCarty Thanks again, man. That's dude. five this big really words. Cool. <laughs> this is no, a lot thank of you. Th and thank you for everybody for coming out. Yeah. If anybody wants to get a picture or anything like that, uh, absolutely. Hey, everybody. Film critic Tom Santilli with Movie Show Plus. I have exciting news. I'm going to be hosting a new film series coming to the Maple Theater. It's called The Movies That Made Me. The concept is simple. Every time I pick a spotlight guest, and that guest will pick a film that they love. A film that was influential to them, whether in childhood, their professional career, or their adult life. We won't know what the movie is. It'll be a surprise. And once we view it, we will have that guest in theater for a live Q&A. On Wednesday, May 10th, my spotlight guest will be Star Wars artist and filmmaker Matt Bush. He will have exclusive hand-drawn art for everyone in attendance. This one is going to be tons of fun. I don't want you to miss the movies that made me. Check out MovieshowPlus.com to watch this episode online and for exclusive content, extended interviews with Greg Russell, and a complete archive of movie reviews with Tom Santilli. Also, make sure to like and follow us on social media and on our Movie Show Plus YouTube channel.